Hi, let's talk about another intermolecular force. This is going to be dipole induced dipole. So really what that means is you have a polar molecule that has a permanent dipole, a partial negative and a partial positive with a nonpolar molecule. So we're going to induce a dipole and that induced dipole is temporary. So very, very similar to London dispersion forces. We're going to create for a moment a dipole in a nonpolar molecule. So you recall a nonpolar molecule cell shares electrons perfectly. An example here is going to be iodine. Shares perfectly because iodine, if you have an I and an I, they each have the same identical electronegativity. They're going to share the same. So quintessential, greatest example of nonpolar molecule. Now to contrast that, we have water, extremely polar because it has hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, and London dispersion forces. Um, two lone pairs on the oxygen, very, very polar. So we mix these two together and guess what? The iodine will dissolve in the water. You're like, wait, how can you have something so polar dissolve something nonpolar? Well, it is this. It's a dipole induced dipole. Uh, what will happen is that the water will create a temporary dipole in this iodine um, where if an oxygen, okay, watch this. I'm going to bring the water close to, um, actually, you know, let me do it on this side. It'll be a little bit easier for you to see it on the side. The water is going to come close to the iodine. Now, you know that those lone pairs, this is our partial negative side, and that's a partial positive of that very polar water. As it comes close to the iodine, these electrons are just sharing equally, okay? But this negative, that high density, that um, distribution of electrons, higher density of electrons on this side comes close, it's going to repel the electrons in this iodine, forcing them over here on the left-hand side. So this is going to become a partial negative. We're going to have um, an uneven distribution of electrons now. Those electrons are repelled over here, which creates, induces a partial positive on the iodine. And for just a second, boom, those attract. You're going to have that partial negative on the permanent water attracted to that partial positive on that temporary dipole on the iodine. And that's what happens to all of those trillions of molecules is the water induces for a moment, creates a polarity. Now, Iodine will be a little bit easier um, to induce dipoles because it's such a large molecule. Remember, there's a word that professors, AP loves it, iodine because it's so large. I mean, one iodine at smaller mass is 126.9 grams per mole. So we're looking at what, um, 253, something like that, 252.8 um, grams per mole. That's big, a lot of surface area on that. It's easy to polarize it, to force all those electrons to this side, creating that positive negative, or that partial positive and that partial negative. So it's easily polarizable. It's in essence, easy to induce that dipole because um, it's easily polarizable. And that's the word that you would use. Let's write this down, polarizable. Because that's so large, it does have a lot of dispersion, London dispersion forces. It's going to be easy for that water to induce the dipole and the iodine will dissolve inside of the water. Um, now, I wanted to show you hierarchy on this. So if we're talking about pure substances, you can only use this right here. Hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, London dis dispersion. There's your hierarchy. Now, if we have mixtures, you can have mixtures with hydrogen bonding, mixtures with dipole, dipole, mixtures with London dispersion forces. But then here are two more types of mixtures. So hydrogen bonding, and then the next strongest would be ion dipole because that's a full on charge instead of just a partial. Um, and then dipole dipole, and the next one is dipole um, induced dipole is actually stronger than the London dispersion forces. And here's my question for you, why? Why would this have greater intermolecular forces, a greater strength than London dispersion forces? I bet you answered it, is because this has a permanent dipole on it, so it's going to be stronger. Is it full on dipole inducing a dipole, where this is always dipole, it's always induced dipole, induced dipole. It'd be like two iodine molecules coming together and those inducing the dipoles, opposed to water, which always has a dipole inducing the dipole. So this is going to be stronger, uh, greater strength than the London dispersion forces. Okay, nice. Now, 
All of these I have videos on and an overview of intermolecular forces. If you're like, what are intermolecular forces? You need some help? There's a ton of videos on the playlist for solids and liquids. You can get everything you need. All right, good work. Have a great day.